Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to go on a hypothetical adventure and we're going to take a look at our own Milky Way galaxy from a far away distance just to see what it actually looks like and to experience the effects of redshift. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So a few years back we discovered a really, really, really far away galaxy. This galaxy was called, or I guess is called, GNZ11, and I actually talked about it a couple of years ago. And if you ever are able to look at it with a telescope, what you'll actually experience is a very unusual sight. It looks nothing like our old galaxy. It's a very unusual, misshapen red blob of, well, I guess, light. And that's because at such far away distances, we start experiencing an extremely, extremely high redshift. Now, if you don't really know what I'm talking about, um, in essence, as you travel through the universe, as you move away from a certain point, you'll start experiencing the stretching of space away from that particular object. In other words, the farther away we move from the Milky Way, which is right here, the more the actual space itself will be stretching away from it as well. So even at this distance of only about a million or half a million light years at where we are right now, uh, we are already sl moving away slightly from the Milky Way, even if we just stand completely still. And this is something that um, Ed Edwin Hubble discovered years ago, and we refer to this as... Um, the expansion of universe, um, and it's usually measured with something known as Hubble constant. So the farther away you move, and the farther away you are, the more things fly apart from each other. And at very large distances, this becomes so apparent that if I were to move away at, let's say, 1 billion light years away from Milky Way, and if I were to look back at it, it would already look a lot different because right now it's moving away relatively fast from us and so looking back at the Milky Way we would actually witness something a little bit different. Now let's actually zoom into it so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, it's basically going to be redshifted and you can see some galaxies are a lot more redshifted than others and that's because they are farther away from us meaning that they actually are moving away farther and faster um, compared to the galaxies that are closer. So this unusual effect is kind of difficult to imagine until you start actually looking at things and measuring the redshift. So right now Milky Way might not appear too different, although it is actually a little bit more red than before, and the galaxy behind it is a little bit, I guess, more orangey. But as I start moving away even more, you'll see the transformation into red light. So, at some point, you'll actually start seeing less and less stars, and some of the stars that were already red to begin with will actually disappear, because they'll become infrared. And the further we move from the Milky Way, the more orange, red, and infrared will start appearing. Now, we're currently at about 3.5 billion light years um, in terms of distance, and you can see that it's already pretty red. So, at this distance, which is close to about 5 billion light years, it's already redshifted to the point where it appears almost entirely red. And this is kind of what you would see from this particular distance. Now remember, this is not because the Milky Way is in any way accelerating from us, or it's not because we are moving away from it, but it's actually because the universe itself is stretching away from us, um, to the point where this object appears to be moving at a ridiculously high speed, where a lot of light gets redshifted. And you can see the galaxy behind us is even farther away, so it's redshifted even more. I don't actually know what galaxy this is, but I'm guessing it's some sort of a randomly generated galaxy that we might not have in real life. Uh, so let's move uh, to the point in space where you would consider it to be the end of the vis visible universe. In other words, at a distance of about 13.8 um, billion light years. And as you can see at this point, the Milky Way almost completely disappears now. It becomes very dark red. And so right around 
here. Maybe here. This is where we would sort of stop seeing the Milky Way almost completely. It's still kind of visible, and I guess if I uh, increase the magnitude a little bit, you'll still see some features, especially the brighter features, but you won't see most of the stars anymore. Now, what you are seeing, though, these are, or these, I guess, were, because we're technically now looking at the history of the Milky Way, um, very, very, very energetic, high, highly energetic X-ray and gamma ray producers. So these are possibly black holes and neutron stars and some other objects that are producing very high frequency radiation that even when redshifted will appear um, as either visible light or at least infrared light. But everything else is now invisible and is stretched to the point where it's in very, very, very low frequencies. Now we can actually move even farther away and this is technically beyond the visible spectrum now and also beyond the what's known as the um, visible universe. Um, but nevertheless, you can still kind of see the remains, remainders of light here. And at some point, even a few things that were still visible become completely visible. Now, this is at the distance of about 20 billion light years, and you can see that what's left of the Milky Way are literally just those very bright objects. And this is actually how we could potentially study uh, things like black holes and also things like neutron stars at faraway distances if we had powerful enough telescopes, because that's essentially all we're seeing now. We're not seeing anything else except for those extremely energetic objects. We can still actually keep moving away, and at some point even these things will disappear. Uh, but as of now, the furthest object away from us, the GN um, Z11 galaxy, is at a distance of approximately um, 32 billion light years, which is actually somewhere around right here. So this is kind of the farthest galaxy we've ever seen. This is the distance to that galaxy. And that's because, um, well, the galaxy was moving away from us. And so when the first light left it, um, by the time that it got to our planet Earth, the galaxy was already really, really far away from that spot as well. And essentially, we're seeing a little bit more than that, which also means that that particular galaxy was very, very energetic, um, even when it was just created 400 million years after the Big Bang. But what you are seeing right now is actually the future um, of our own Milky Way galaxy, seen from a distance of 32 billion light years, something that may be a species somewhere far away at a distance of 32 billion light years from us, will actually see in the future while looking at our own galaxy. Now, obviously, they won't see anything spectacular, they'll just see this, and they might not even consider the fact that there is a, or there was, um, a sentient species such as ourselves living here, but this is what you'll see. Let's move back to our galaxy just to see how it transforms again from what seems to be highly redshifted to something that will look more like our own galaxy. It's going to start getting some features in a few seconds here as we move closer and closer to it, and you'll start seeing how it returns back to its normal um, appearance. So redshift is actually a very interesting feature, and it's something that scientists always use to try to study distances to various objects, but also something that they use to study um, and try to understand the universe itself. There's still a lot of things we really don't get about the universe. Some people even think that we don't really understand gravity either, because a lot of things just don't seem to make sense. And here we go. Here's the Milky Way. But nevertheless, though, uh, this is one of those things that is really, really interesting, very interesting to study, and definitely allows us to understand the scope of the universe in a lot more detail. Interestingly, this is actually a relatively recent concept we discovered, because even 100 years ago, scientists didn't even know how big the universe really was. It took them decades to figure out that what they were seeing were not nebula, not some stars, but were actual galaxies similar to the Milky Way far, far, far away from us. All right, we're only about a billion light years away from the Milky Way, and this is kind of what it looks like from this distance. Back to its original shape, colors, and looks. And so that's kind of what all of this would look like if you were to look at the Milky Way from a distance of 30 billion light years, I guess 30 billion years in the future. 
because by then, if we were to look at our galaxy as it would be, it would most likely be transformed completely. It would look nothing like this because first of all, it's going to be combined with the Andromeda galaxy and become a super, super large galaxy in terms of size. But it's also going to definitely transform in terms of shape, color and composition. It might also become what's known as a dead galaxy because it might not have any gas left to create new stars. But all of this is a story for another video. And anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.